Hey T-Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing this Series 4 Vectra kettle by a UK company called Grunberg. And I'm gonna be reviewing specifically for its application to tea and gong fu brewing. I've done kettle reviews before. I'll stick links in the description below if you wanna check out those videos. The last one I did was about this fellow Stag EKG, which I still love, I still use today, although it does have its flaws. You can go watch that video if you're interested in this very popular kettle and I just thought I'd brought, bring it out so you could sort of visually see some differences and we could point out some ABs. But really, the main event is talking about this very interesting kettle here by a company called Grunberg. Doesn't sound very UK, but it was started in 1945 by an Austrian refugee who left war-torn Vienna at, in World War II and uh, started this company. Sheffield in the UK is very, very well known for its steel. And so it's a, a company which deals with lots of different uh, kitchen Wear and appliances made specifically out of steel, but there's a whole uh, catalog of products, so go check it out if you're interested. I should say from the outset that I believe that this kettle is only available in the EU, so US customers may not be able to get their hands on it, but stick around because I think that the main point of this video is to really highlight a very important feature in this kettle, which I've not found on any other kettles, and that I think is the future for tea kettles and kettles in general. And that is specifically that it's thermally insulated. And uh, let me give you a little bit of background. I, uh, <laughs> in my late night uh, musings, have spent quite a lot of time trying to design the perfect kettle. I've got lots of drawings, lots of specifications. I've been trying to reach out to kettle manufacturers to see if we can do something to create the perfect gong fu kettle, gong fu tea kettle. Unfortunately, one of my ideas is being, has already been patented. So it's a little bit uh, difficult. But anyway, one of the key specifications that I wanted with my kettle was that it was thermally insulated. And we'll sort of get on to the advantages of a thermally insulated kettle a little bit later. And so I looked online to see whether or not there are any thermally insulated kettles out there. And this Vectra supposedly, according to Grunberg, is the world's only thermally insulated kettle, which means that it heats up water and keeps the water thermally insulated so that it's hot. Right, in this review, we're gonna go through the, the same uh, categories that we did for all of our other reviews so that we're keeping things fair. Those are price, build quality, stylings, capacity, speed of heating up water, temperature control, the ergonomics, in other words, how it feels while you're brewing, and any other extra features. So let's dive straight in. Price, this costs 99 pounds and 99p, in other words, 100 pounds, which works out to be about $140. This uh, Stag EKG, which is top of the line um, in terms of uh, a kettle, is $150 plus, you know, 150, 160, 170, it varies depending on where you are. So not a huge price difference between them, but the Stag EKG is more expensive. This is sort of an average, ish price for uh, a, a specialist temperature, temperature control kettle, so not a bad price at all. Right, let's move on to build quality. The build quality on this Vectra is very, very good. It's made out of double walled stainless steel. It feels very, very solid. The grip on this handle feels very, very sturdy, very, very solid. It has a low center of gravity, which is good for stability. Not so great when we're gonna talk about the balance when you're doing the pouring, but we'll talk about that when we get on to ergonomics. The base is a slightly larger footprint than the Stag EKG, but again, it's a very, very solid. It, it feels like it really is not gonna flip around. This is actually a bit light and starts to move a little bit, but this really grips the table and is a, is a really good build quality. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is this. I'm sure a lot of you out there are, have already flagged this. This is made out of polyethylene plastic and uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of controversy around whether or not plastic should be used in kettles and whether or not the plastic will leach any potential chemicals over a long period of time um, in the water. I try to avoid the controversy altogether by not purchasing and not using kettles with any plastic touching the water. So for example, this Stag EKG is fully stainless steel inside. There's only plastic on the top, but that's not touching the water. Whereas with the Vectra, the plastic starts quite high up, 
around here, so it's not touching the water whilst the water is sitting in the kettle or while the water is heating, but obviously the steam is going up and touching the plastic and then the uh, condensation falls back down into the water. And when you pour, the water is gonna be passing through this plastic here. Um, so that may mean that this is totally off the list for you. I have actually um, done a lot of tasting just with water and I can't pick up any uh, plastic note, which is a good thing. Uh, sometimes uh, you do pick up a little bit of plastic taste. So I can't pick up any taste at all. But of course, if you're not uh, interested in anything with plastic touching the water, then this kettle is out of the equation. I have to say that, uh, you know, the reason why they're using plastic is because unless you are gonna have a screw top, uh, you need molding in order for there to be some mechanism to get the water out whilst still sealing the water in a thermally insulated way. At least, you know, that is my thinking behind it. I have been trying to work on designs to avoid that, uh, and this is part of my sort of thinking around the kettle. But currently it is very difficult, if not uh, unheard of, for uh, there to be a thermally insulated way of storing water and making it convenient to pour without unscrewing. And obviously you're not gonna really, it's gonna be very unsafe to have an, a screw top for a kettle. So yes, dealt with, it is plastic. That means that for me, I'm probably not gonna be using this as my go-to kettle. Um, however, I have to say, I have been using this kettle a lot, not just because I'm you know, reviewing it and I wanted to really put it through its paces, but I've really enjoyed the some of those aspects of the thermal insulation, um, and we'll talk about that a bit further down the line. And currently, that's the reason why it has to have a plastic kettle. Um, build quality, one thing that you've uh, no doubt heard in my previous videos, if you've watched them, is my gripe regarding kettle uh, cord length. This is very short as well, um, compared with our other uh, kettles that we reviewed, they're all very short. And with Gong Fu Brewing, you, you want the kettle next to you at your station, and therefore I'm always looking for longer kettle cable lengths. That's why I always have to have uh, extension leads. However, the short cable issue is not a problem with the Vectra because of its thermal insulation. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Right, let's move on to styling. And I'm sure that when a lot of you saw this video, you raised your eyebrows because this is not, well, I doubt that this kettle is on the radar for most tea heads out there. People always talk about the Bonavita, people talk about the Fellow Stag, people talk about the Brewista. Still waiting for a kettle from Brewista. If you're watching Brewista, I'm ready to do the review if you wanna send me a kettle. Um, and I would love to also review the Fellow Corvo, which I know is specifically designed for tea, but is not available in the UK. Again, Fellow, if you'd like me to do a review, then I am ready, of course, to do that. You can send me a kettle. Um, but yeah, this is not uh, a kettle which is on, uh, um, everybody's sort of top 10 lists for baristas and uh, tea heads. And uh, it's not as pretty and, and stylish as a fellow EKG. However, I think that the styling is perfectly acceptable. I think it's actually quite nice. I like it. I think it looks a little bit like a, a catering uh, product, but the, it's sleek. It's got some, you know, it's got a, a, a nice silhouette. Um, I got sent the black one. I actually requested the black one just so sort of I could compare it with the Stag EKG. You may want to avoid black because as you can see, possibly with the Stag EKG, it really does um, show up watermarks and fingerprints a little bit more. Um, I'm not really into this very large um, logo and I have um, only used this for a couple of weeks and cleaned it and it's starting to scratch off. So I'm assuming that that's gonna eventually sort of disappear or start to fade and it's not gonna look very, very nice. Um, but other than that, I think that the kettle itself in terms of its silhouette and shape, I really don't have a problem with it and it's not been uh, an issue sort of aesthetically on my Gong Fu setup. I like the base a lot. It's a little bit big, but the way that they have laid out the temperature control, very, very simple, really, really um, uh, nice visual 
easy to use styling. Um, let me just show you, we're gonna talk about this more when we talk about temperature control, but you can see you can set your temperature by just pushing the arrow buttons and then you push the start button. So you've only got three areas that you need to, to touch. And what's really nice is you get this two colored LED display like a runway. You see the water heating up and it just uh, lights up red, lights up red. So red represents the temperature of the water in the kettle and blue represents your target temperature. All right, you can see it's already at 40 degrees. All right, let me turn that off for now. So styling wise, it may not be the prettiest kettle in the world. Certainly it's, it's not in the same sort of realm as your, your fellow products, but I actually think it's, it's, it's quite a nice looking product. I really, you know, have no problem with it. And as I said, it looks pretty good with most uh, Gong Fu setups. So styling wise, I'm very happy with this kettle. Right, let's talk about capacity. This capacity is 1.5 liters and I love that capacity. Really, really appreciate the larger size. And you know, that's going back to styling. It's easier to make a more stylish looking kettle when your capacity is lower. And I really have a problem with this 0.9 liter uh, capacity in this fellow 4T. I know it's suitable for baristas and their pour over coffee, but for tea that's too small and I'm continuously getting up and uh, refilling this kettle. Whereas this baby here, I have loved the fact that we've got 1.5 liters. That gives me a really good amount of water to do my tastings and do my uh, sessions without having to fill up too often. Next up, we're gonna talk about the speed to bring the temperature to boiling point. So we've done a standardized test with all of our kettles, one liter of water from cold to boiling point. Uh, the Vectra does it in around three minutes, 45 seconds, three minutes, 50 seconds. It's a 1.5 kilowatt uh, power. So it's not, well, it says 1.5 to 1.8. I'm not quite, quite sure what that means, that it's variable. I'm not sure it says that on the website, but still it's sort of um, average kettle power. I'm surprised that they didn't put slightly more power in it because there is a certain amount of energy that's required to bring water from, from cold to uh, boiling point. I would assume that with a thermally insulated kettle, that amount of energy reduces because there is going to be less uh, heat being lost during the heat, uh, heating process. Um, and therefore, just bumping up that power rating would mean that you'd get it to, to a boiling point faster, um, much faster than other kettles. This uh, Stag uh, EKG did it in uh, three minutes and 50 seconds, but that's 0.9 liters. So you need to add about 10% onto that. So it would be about four minutes, 15. So this is faster at heating up the water than the Stag. And it's sort of in the average range for water heating speeds for these kinds of kettles. I would love it if they just bumped up that power rating so that I could get up to temperature a little bit quicker, but I'm being particularly picky there. Okay, let's talk about temperature control. Let's talk about the good points first. Uh, as I said, I really like this very clear display. Blue light is your target temperature. Red light shows you what the temperature is currently in the kettle. So currently in the kettle, this is 70 degree water. If I wanted to t put it up to 80 degrees, I can, or 90 degrees, I can do that push the on button. It still shows me the live temperature and it shows me uh, the a rise to 90 degrees, like a runway of lights. Very, very clear signaling system. I can see the temperature all the time. Unlike the uh, Stag EKG, where the display is very difficult to read when you're looking at it from a low angle, these lights are very, very visual, very, very easy to, to uh, read. So you know when you've reached temperature and you know the temperature in the kettle, it's always showing live temperature. So even if um, the uh, heating function is not on, it will still show the live temperature. Another great feature, the accuracy on the temperature is really, really good. I've tested this um, for the various different settings and it tends to be within around one degree Celsius of the target temperature, which is excellent, much better than the Stag um, and a lot of other kettles we've tested. So thumbs up to Grunberg there. The accuracy is very, very good. The lower limit of the temperature is 40 degrees. Oh, I should say that little beep 
is also an auditory uh, signal that the temperature has reached the desired temperature. Uh, and some people don't want sound, some people do. I tend to avoid having any sort of disturbance during my Gongfu session, but that little short beep I think is fine, is actually useful. You know, it, I, sometimes when I'm feeding my daughter, I can just hear a little beep and it's nice just as a signal that the water has reached temperature and it is discreet enough that it doesn't disturb me. So thumbs up there as well. As I said, the lower temperature is 40 degrees, which is great, which means that you can cover all tea types, including those very, very low temperature Gyokuro teas as well. So very, very functional, easy to use temperature control. You can just set it and walk away and leave it. Let's talk about the negatives. Uh, one negative that may be uh, for some people out there is that the temperature display is only in Celsius, so no Fahrenheit. The other big issue, and it is a big issue with tea, of course, is that the increments are only in 10 uh, Celsius increments, so you can't do 83, 85, 87 degrees, you can't set that. Now that is a big problem and probably um, a reason why most tea heads out there will not purchase this kettle. But, you know, some people may find it's okay, uh, you know, if you want that accuracy, you, you're going to want, you want like increments of five degrees would be probably acceptable for most people, but increments of 10 degrees is just too wide a range, despite its accuracy. Um, another issue potentially for some people is that it doesn't have a hold heat function, but then because it's thermally insulated, it shouldn't have that hold heat function. The whole point of it is that it holds temperature without you having to set it to hold temperature. So that's why I think it's fine for that not to be on this uh, kettle. Overall, I'm very happy with the temperature control in terms of the accuracy and the clarity and the simplicity of use. I just wish the increments were finer. Right, let's move on to ergonomics. And, you know, there is a big problem with this kettle and we're gonna talk about that. Um, and again, you know, it's going to probably mean that for most people, they're not gonna be purchasing this kettle. But, uh, you know, I keep saying, but there is some, the, the, the thermal, insulating function on this kettle. It sort of makes all of those other problems or other flaws diminish. Not, you can't take them away, but diminish them. Right, I've got flower crane here. Flower crane has just, the, 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 the rest of our batch of flower crane has just come into stock. An amazing tea. Um, so I thought I'd highlight it here. For those people who are interested in picking up flower crane and we have received so many people saying when's it back when's it back when's it back it is back the rest of our, our experimental batch of white tea made from Jingmai dashu trees so old tea trees i'm going to break off a chunk here because i do need to brew some tea with this kettle and i don't have space for the whole inspection tray etc so we're gonna do it a little bit rough here. Right, let me put that to the side. So let's talk about the positives of the ergonomics. As I said, the grip on this handle is really, really nice. It feels very, very solid. The uh, loudness of the uh, heating of this kettle is excellent. I'm not sure if that is to do with the fact that it's uh, double walled and therefore not just thermally insulated, but slightly auditory insulated as well, but it's very, very quiet. It's probably the quietest kettle that we've um, used. Really, really good. I'll just turn this up to 100 degrees. We need to bring it to temperature anyway, but you can hear my mic is very close to this kettle. So you're not gonna uh, be you know, putting your ear this close to the kettle, but listen. Wow, really, really, quiet and like a luxury, luxury rumbling sound. Wonderful, quiet kettle. Uh, the other thing, which is great, cool to the touch, thermally insulated means that, you know, it's, I mean, this, when you have a little child, uh, like I do, is wonderful. 
because we've got kettles all the time going around our house and, and she has burnt herself on the stag before, you know, kettles get hot, you know, that's the way it is, they need to learn. But with this, because it's thermally insulated, this is a boiling point and it feels just vaguely warm to the touch, which is really, really nice um, in your sessions. I love that. Um, there's that beep again, nice beep in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, sound, timbre and volume. The fact that this is sealed, the water is sealed uh, in order to protect from heat loss means that you don't have water bubbling over and steaming out. And one of the big issues that I have with this stag is that it tends to have a lot of steam coming out of the, these holes up here and tends to bubble over, especially because it's only 0.9 liters, I fill it always to the max because I wanna try and get the most out of one heating session of this uh, kettle. And so it, it tends to splutter and spill and you get like the splashes on your foot, which is not particularly fun at seven in the morning when you burn yourself with scalding water coming out of this. So, you know, I do really love the fact that you've got this totally insulated uh, water which therefore means you're not getting steam and spillage coming out everywhere. All right, those are the positives of the ergonomics. Now, let's deal with the biggest problem with this kettle. Apart from the plastic, if you, you know, if that's a, if that's a deal breaker for you. And that is, let me move it slightly to the side so we can bring the tea a little bit more central. Um, and that is the pour. So we, we often talk about the poor function, uh, well we always talk about the poor function of the kettles and I often show slow motion um, footage of the poor. I don't know if I'm going to do that to the poor Vectra because, well, we'll see, but uh, it, it is a disastrous pour in terms of, in terms of the smoothness of the pour. Um, and it varies, the, 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 the way that it pours varies depending on where the water level is. So you, you get like uncontrollably vigorous pours and you get uh, sort of dribbles depending on, you know, uh, depending on where the water level is. Now, I complained about the Stag EKG pour because I said it was very, very um, controlled and slow, but too slow but let's just give you some sort of visual representation of what a nice controlled pour means that you've got accuracy and control. Are you ready to see the Vectra? And again, it may be due to the molding of the lid and the way that it's been, uh, that, the, that the lid has to be designed in order for it to be thermally insulated. But here we go. All right, that actually is the best that I've seen it for, for a while. Um, so when the water is high, you get quite vigorous, as you could see, but a little bit um, uncontrollable pause. Let me just brew this tea. However, as soon as the water gets lower, you see how it, it just suddenly spurts out? It's very difficult to know the speed that it's going to be coming out, um, out of the kettle. And when you get to the bottom, it becomes crazy, like, like multiple streams. I'll show you images of how the pour gets. It's, it's not pretty um, and it is a problem. It's a big problem. And I don't know if that's a problem which is solvable. My suspicion is that it is solvable. Um, so the way that it works, and you've got to be careful when you open these because, because it's thermally insulated, that stays super hot and we'll talk about how it's able to retain heat. It's very impressive. Um, but you can see here, I'll try and get a close up, but essentially that push button raises this area. So the water is going in, in all directions in, into this uh, top part of the chamber and then coming out of this little um, opening here. So it's probably very turbulent as it's uh, exiting. And therefore you needed 
a, a, a more elongated and probably higher um, collar here on this spout in order to just bring everything in um, and avoid that sort of drippy, uncontrollable, multi-stream pour. All right, let me taste some of this tea. I'm overflowing here. Just a remarkable tea. I'll put a, a link in the description below if you're interested to find out about this tea. I'm not gonna talk about the tasting notes, but it's uh, always a delightful day when a flower crane gets pulled out. Um, so the pour on it is, is definitely a problem. And if Grunberg could work on honing in that pour, that would be a big, big step up. Um, also, as I said before, it's got a very low center of gravity. So the pour feels quite uncontrollable there as well. Um, it sort of feels a bit awkward, like you've got to pour it a little bit at a higher angle than you would normally feel comfortable compared to the stag, which is a, you know, is a much um, more easy to control and easier to hold and more, it feels more balanced in the hand. This feels like it's not been designed for smooth controlled pouring, clearly. Um, and uh, Grunberg will probably be the first to admit that, that it's not been designed for that. But if they could just work on it, then that would be a big advantage. Uh, this doesn't have any timer function, uh, which is something that the Stag has, which is nice so you could time your, your tea brewing. But you know, that for me is not a big deal. I can always sort of count in my head or pull out a stopwatch. I don't necessarily need that to be built into the kettle. And as I said, I do like the simplicity and clarity of the, uh, of the user interface for the kettle itself. Right, finally, let's move on to the extras. And this has one huge extra. We've talked about it already, but we're gonna go into the detail of why I love this thermal insulation. This thermal insulation is excellent. Right, first of all, as I said, cool to the touch, love that. Secondly, very important, eco-friendly. I find that it grates on me when I'm brewing my Gongfu tea. I have one Guy Wan's worth of tea, pour it out, I'm drinking it over, I don't know, a 10 minute period. And then I know that I need to put this kettle back onto its base, turn on the electricity again and bring it up to temperature. Or it's on hold function, which means I put it back and it's just always bumping up the temperature um, and using power to do that. And when I was designing the ultimate Gongfu kettle, I was thinking that's madness. Surely we can figure out a way to be more efficient and more uh, ecologically friendly by using less power. Um, and this solves that, it really does. It is remarkable how this holds heat. It holds heat to the point where I can have pretty much a full session or at least you know, a good 40, half an hour to 45 minutes of uh, brewing uh, easily without worrying about putting this back on its base, which means that that cable length doesn't need to be long because you can put this in the kitchen and you can just bring this to your uh, setup and you've essentially got a thermos next to you. And it holds the temperature really well. We did tests, um, we brought this to boiling point, so 100 degrees, and after uh, 15 minutes, it was at 97.5 degrees, so only lost about two degrees Celsius, which is amazing. After half an hour, it only lost another one and a half degrees, so it was at 96 degrees. After 45 minutes, it was at 94 degrees. So if I'm brewing teas that call for sort of 99 degree water, I would have no problem brewing up to half an hour uh, without putting this back on its base to uh, top up the temperature. And um, after an hour, it was down to 92 degrees. So yes, after an hour, you're starting to get to the point where, you know, it is gonna be affecting your brews and you can just stick it back onto the base. And because of the fact that it's held the heat for so, uh, so well, you're not gonna need as much electricity to bring it back up to that 100 degrees. So for ecological reasons, but also for pure convenience, it's been a joy to have a kettle that I do not have to continuously put back on its base, continuously hear heating up, continuously feel like, oh, should I have it on hold or not? Am I gonna drink more? I'm not sure. All of that just gets 
put to one side. I don't have to worry about that. I've got my thermos here, which is, is keeping my water to temperature for up to, I would say, I'm happy to brew up to sort of 30 minutes, 35, even 45 minutes potentially um, with uh, one heating uh, cycle of this kettle. And that really is a game changer for me. This stag, we tested the, the heat retention capacity on it. And after 15 minutes, it was down to 86 degrees. So that's just unusable. So in other words, probably after five or seven minutes, you have to reheat this water. And then it dropped to 75 degrees after 30 minutes, 66 degrees after 45 minutes, and 57 degrees after 60 minutes. So you can see it's just dissipating heat. That's just a waste of energy that it's dissipating. So you need to just basically be heating between every single infusion. Whereas this, I can do four, five, six infusions, depending on how quickly I'm drinking, without moving, without having to bring this kettle back uh, to its base to heat it up. I love that. I think it's wonderful. And I think we should give major props to Grunberg for creating this thermal insulation kettle. Right, let's just sort of do a recap here. The main things to think about, um, the negatives on this kettle, the ones that really stand out to me, plastic lid. Maybe there's a way, maybe there's a way that with clever design, you can have thermal insulation without having a plastic lid. I understand that that's very, very difficult, but there might be a way. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is the increments of the temperature is too broad. If there were five degree increments, I would accept that. I'm sure there are other tea heads out there that would say, no, no, I want like to be able to do it to the actual degree. I would accept five degree increments. I would like there to be just a display for Fahrenheit and, um, and Celsius just to help people who, who use Fahrenheit. I realize that this is only available in the EU, so it makes sense that it's only Celsius. But if you wanted Grunwerk to make this more expansive for tea heads across the world, then you would need to include some way of showing Fahrenheit. Um, and finally, the other big negative for me is that pour. Um, it doesn't look too bad when the water's quite full, but when you get down to the lower regions of this kettle, when the water level drops, believe me, it gets pretty messy and uh, that needs to be sorted out. If Grunberg can sort out those three things, I know that that's a big ask, of course, then I think that this kettle would potentially be a up there with the absolute top kettles to choose for Gongfu Brewing because of all of the benefits. Build quality, excellent. The, the clarity and the way that they present temperature is excellent. Very, very clear, very, very easy to use. And the thermal insulating properties is a game changer. Believe me, if you uh, had this next to you when you're doing your Gongfu brews, there is something that it adds to the, the session, this, this, this relinquishing of your requirement to constantly get up and down and, and put the kettle back onto its base if it's further away. But even if the kettle with extension leads has been brought to your table, you know, still just having it spluttering and having it continuously, you know, using power, I think it's, it has brought a certain peace and calm to the session, which I just absolutely love. So I hope that it's the future for kettles, thermal insulated kettles, not just for all the advantages that we talked about regarding the aesthetic and the use in Gong Fu, but also for ecological reasons. Um, that's very full. I've got a lot of tea to drink. Um, I hope that you give props to this Vectra kettle. It's not going to replace the Stag EKG for me right now, but uh, Really, it has highlighted some flaws in all other kettles that I think needs to be resolved. And um, as I said, I've got lots of ideas for kettles. If, you've got any, if you know any kettle manufacturers out there that want to get in touch, then please do uh, reach out to me. 
because uh, I think we can we can make the perfect Gongfu kettle um, given the right amount of time and dedication. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing Mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.